Well, it all comes down to this for these two teams, both facing elimination, both with a chance to punch their ticket into the grand finals where LGD China will await them. Fnatic and Vici Gaming, game three of our lower bracket finals here at the HyperX D2L. And for the second time in a row, Fnatic's done it. They've come in underdogs. They managed to take a bad loss, but not a series and give themselves a chance to win. We saw how impressive they were last night. You think they've got a chance to continue here in this series as well? Yeah, they definitely have a very good chance to. Um, I think a lot of it depends on the draft, though. Mm -hmm. um, first game, the draft was like, eh, so, so. I think that right. Spectre pick definitely caught them out by surprise. So in game three, they really need to um, make sure they have a solid draft that they want to take down VG. Yep. Speaking of draft, it's already underway, and we can see an early Doom pick out from VG Gaming. They banned out the IO, not getting, wanting to give Fnatic that hero for a second time. Two Still, no Alchemist permitted to make it through the ban phase. They do go ahead and grab up an early Five Crystal Maiden remaining. after banning the Venomancer as well. So Fnatic keeping their options open, just picking up Reserve a support time. early on. VG, though, continuing the trend of Doom <laughs> remaining very, very popular here in the D2L. Yeah, I think Vici's draft has been is much better. Uh, oh. Banning out the Wisp, I think, is pretty important. And Wisp Radiant wasn't that big of a factor in game one, but in game two, it, it just completely caught him off guard in a lot of team fights. Being able to relocate from behind and the couple of saves that No Tail had, that is just extremely difficult to deal with. So I think that banning it is the best solution for them. Fnatic going with the Timbersaw. Timbersaw does decently well versus Doom. Uh, Timbersaw kind of gets owned by silences and disables, or long uh, hexes, rather. Um, Doom, Ten he seconds remaining. has a lot of strength. The Whirling Death just takes off so much of his Five HP. Five seconds um, remaining. But I, I don't know. Both of those heroes like kind of work against each other. I haven't really seen the matchup too Reserve often. Time. A lot of it's going to come down to what Fnatic can draft to go with the Timber Saw. I mean, if you can make it so Doom has a hard time choosing a target for Doom, or if you can just get the jump on him, even something that is silence-based on its own uh, can make Doom a sitting duck. But I really like the early Timber Saw pickup from Fnatic. I mean, they need, we saw in game two, where their success tends to come from is derailing Vici Gaming from what they do so well, which is find advantages in the early and mid-game 10 to 15 to 20 minutes, bang. and then parlay those into a mid-game transition oh, that becomes hard to deal with. And Vici, grabbing the Visage up with Fnatic's their second pick, they'll go ahead and ban out the chip. Yep, I think Fnatic should ban out a Pugna again. Um, Super's Pugna was really well played in game number one, and uh, it's it, it just works so well for Vici. It's um, pretty annoying to deal with as a Crystal Maiden and Timber Saw, both of those being fairly remaining. heavy mana users too. Visage pick, no surprise there. One of the strongest supports Five in the game. Um, definitely a close number two, I'd say, behind um, Venomancer and or Out. Reserve time. Still waiting to see where the yeah. bands are going to be. Just now beginning to ban through to burn through their uh, bonus time on both sides. We'll be a Nyx Assassin. We saw Super do a lot of work with that hero. <laughs> In game one, not enough to keep his team Fnatic's together, though, and, and prevent to Fnatic from parlaying it into a 20-minute uh, 20 win. But, you know, Fnatic at this point, they have a lot of options available to them. Vici could go with something very along the lines that they tend to draft, very push-centric, very early fight-centric. But Timbersaw does Ten a good job at derailing remaining. that with or without items. Chakram in and of itself can make it difficult to push Five into many towers remaining. early on. So Fnatic, you think this is a game where they're going to go heavy team fight, or you think they'll go for a well-rounded squad? Turn mm. to pick. Fnatic's probably just going to go. I, I don't think their strength lies in team fight. I think it's more around just being able to accomplish objectives around the map as small groups. Yep. So I don't think they should draft for team fight. I think they should draft some team fight just so VG doesn't roll them um, in team fights. But um, let's see, the OD ban after Nyx is pretty standard. Uh, Nyx doesn't really counter OD, but he still works very remaining. well versus him. Mm -hmm. And um, Fnatic did have first pick coming out of that next ban, and looks like Elder Titan. Radiant they may be setting up for pick. a uh, Shadow Fiend pick again, actually. Yeah, it would make sense. Um, going with... And Slardar. They could just run the same thing <laughs> as last game, except uh, with Elder Titan instead of Bristle. I actually think I would like that even better. I mean, Elder Titan just makes everyone be better. Even Crystal Maiden fits very well into that and gives them some early roam potential instead of just pure out-and-out uh, out five band. Vici right now, uh, going to be looking to round out their damage. I mean, Doom can do damage once he gets items up. Ten Visage is a very remaining. much a one-trick pony when it comes to damage. And we saw that in effect in, uh, in our last Five game. They, after the remaining. BKBs came out, they just didn't have enough Disruptor. damage out of Luna to do anything. But Ooh. Disruptor going to be the third pick, pick out. So looks like Vici fearing the mass teamfight draft. That is an unusual <laughs> pick. 
It's very good for Wisp, but Wisp has been banned out. Um, it's the silence is also going to be incredibly effective against Timbersaw, um, and they have two silences pretty much: Doom and uh, Static Field from the Static Storm from the Disruptor too. So Timbersaw is going to uh, be having a difficult time, but at the same time, Vici, Ten seconds are they going to be able to deal with a BKB from important heroes on Fnatic? Doom does like okay Five versus it, I suppose, and Visage does like okay being able to right click with the familiars, but Disruptor completely He's useless against time. BKBs unless you get Deceptor up on him, which I have not yet seen a competitive. Actually, didn't we see that? Did we, we saw that in our 6.78 play, didn't oh, we? A minute? Really? Yeah, uh, I can't, it was like the first day the patch released, we saw mm. someone do it. I'm almost positive. Um, it was like in one of our Western Division matches, I want to say. But yeah, um, what you said <clears throat> definitely still stands. I mean, Disruptor can just be nullified by BKBs. And, you know, having him as an answer to Timbersaw is certainly an interesting kind of a pick, but so much of this is going to revolve around positioning and just being able to isolate heroes. I mean, Doom, uh, being able to Doom out the Timbersaw or whoever else he wants. If Disruptor can catch two heroes in a kinetic field in a static storm while Doom manages to hit a high-priority target, I mean, that's three-fifths of your combat effectiveness essentially nullified unless you have substantial amounts of right-click built. Thing is, I think you're right. It wouldn't surprise me a bit to see Fnatic go right back to a Shadow Fiend pick with this composition they are have and that's how they got past it before just being able to right click down Luna uh, played by Siler in game two no it's gonna be a death problem. radiant team pick so Fnatic might be the ones that are pushing Vici and there's still no Pugna pickup too so I'm I'm very surprised that there's no Pugna pickup um Elder Titan and Timbersaw and Death Prophet, not really sure who's going to take the mid lane. Might be Elder Titan carry, Death Prophet mid, and Timbersaw in the off lane. So uh, Fnatic may just be lacking one support. The Death Prophet pickup feels like a Ten bit of a liability. The last few times we've seen her play to D2L competitive play, it's very much Five a get out, push remaining. towers, win the game very quickly, or maybe you die once or twice in the laning phase and suddenly you're just completely Reserve useless time. because you're a little bit underleveled and easy to kill. Gyrocopter will be the Fanatics pickup from Vici, so to continuing to add some team fight of their own. Gyrocopter works pretty damn effectively as a counter push hero just because it's tough to push down, push through call down, flat cannon a very nice measure, and he has a great amount of magic damage output early on with Rocket Barrage. Yeah, Gyrocopter, a very strong pick. I'm surprised I haven't seen him at all in this tournament. Um, just one of the Five most standard carries, remaining. good mix of magical and physical damage, still can do a lot of damage without items and farms like an absolute beast, and he's, he's good in tri lanes. I think this hero has kind of fallen off the map, but not for a good reason. Yeah, just one of those kind of trendy picks that comes and goes, but his effectiveness can really be questioned. And waiting on the final bands out, like you said, Pugna's still available. And uh, even though it was Era that done it before, I have seen uh. Fnatic run Pugna as a one-position carry before Radiant Vici team ban. Um, has the the chance to ban out now. We see they do take out Super Storm Spirit, though. Mm -hmm. uh, we also saw Aoi play Death Prophet the other day, too, as a carry. So, so Fnatic's lane is completely unsure as to what they're going to do. Storm Spirit ban, I think is Ten pretty good here. Remaining. Death Prophet, if he gets doomed and, and he already has Exorcism out, or she already Five has Exorcism out, it's remaining. not that big of a deal. But she does need some sort of tank ability in this game. Uh, too. Like, if, if you get disrupted time. back, you're most likely going to die, too. So uh, she either needs, like, a BKB or just immense amounts of HP and mitigation. Vici still thinking it over. And I actually would really like a Pugna pickup here. When you look at Vici's entire team, what are they predicated on until the ultra late game? Abilities. Rocket Barrage, Flat Cannon, Call Down. Disruptor's entire kit. Visage is next to useless outside of uh, being able to right-click with his birds, as you had mentioned. But still, you want to be able to spam a grave chill. You want to be able to spam out soul assumption. Same thing with Doom. Eventually, he will build right click, and you don't draft him for that. You draft him for his ultimate. But still, he wants to be able to use his abilities, use the stomp coming off of creeps with devour, so on. And uh, they're actually going to ban the Shadow Fiend. So the respect Fanatics not to uh, to demon. To pick. Yep, <laughs> respect indeed. That would that would make their lane super weird unless they wanted to do Elder Titan support. I guess I haven't seen that in a while, and I don't think it's quite as effective as the Elder Titan off lane, but. Um, actually, yeah, I guess Fnatic is gearing up to pick a carry last. And we'll wait to see, but yeah, a, uh, the Nether Ward would just do, cause a huge amount of problems for VG Gaming's lineup, especially during Ten the time frame when remaining. Fnatic's composition really wants to capitalize. You know, you want to get a lot done um, in the remaining. first 11 levels of Death Prophet's life. Bristleback would do pretty good here, too. 
Reserve mm. time. A hero that doesn't really care about getting glints back. A hero that can actually tank through gyrocopter damage. Ooh, a Kunga last. Radiant That's team pick. Very ambitious by Fnatic, I think. <laughs> like, ambitious. Their, their team fight's decent, but it's hard to pull off. Yeah. Like, Timbersaw, he has to like do go around the fight uh, without getting silenced. Death Prophet has to make sure she doesn't get doomed or glints back into a call down. Kunka has to hit X marks the spot with pretty much no setup, I guess, besides Crystal Maiden, Frostbite, or or our, the Torrent Boat combo without any setup besides Frostbite Ten and or Elder Titan remaining. Stomp, which is very unreliable. So, eh, Fnatic's lineup is, Five seconds I, I wouldn't remaining. say it's bad. It just seems difficult to pull off. It's not a face rush lineup like last game. Yeah, it's not a Reserve swarm lineup. Time. And it's gonna all come down to execution. Whereas Vici, I mean, a lot of skill cap gonna be involved in this, in particular in the Disruptor play. But I feel like this is a fairly even draft for the most part. I mean, having the ability to just go fight every 60 seconds if you're, uh, if you're Kunkka is certainly going to be a huge help whenever you have a lineup. You know, be honest, Death Prophet just has a, a shelf life. She has a Best Buy date. And if you don't get a lot of mileage out of her in the first 20 to 30 minutes, first 25 in particular, it could be very difficult to scale into the late game. But Vici going to go ahead and last pick Super his Dragon Knight. So game three, all set. Take a look at the drafts here. Merlini, who do you give the advantage to? I think that Vici has the more standard draft. Their uh, lineup has a lot more room for error to error, error, error. I almost said error. It mm -hmm. has a lot more room for error, too. So... Uh, they can also like farm ancient stacks with Gyrocopter and Dragon Knight too, um, in case they get a little far behind early. And their team fight is uh, pretty strong too. Uh, Fanatics, their lineup can deal with BKB uh, quite effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, Elder Titan with his minus armor, Death Power with Exorcism, and Kunko with his uh, Tidebringer can still do a ton of damage during BKB. So um, VT isn't going to be able to face roll them down with BKBs. But again, their lineup Ten is much more difficult remaining. to execute. They have to play around Static Storm, play around uh, Glimpse into a flat Five cannon seconds, into uh, Call Down. They have to play around Doombringer too. And um, Vici has, I, I think, a slight edge just because of ease of execution. And, you know, look, as we move ahead, the one thing that stands out immediately for Vici is until they Prepare manage to get some right-click built on the gyrocopter, they're very magic damage heavy, just flat out. I mean, they've got a lot of it. They've got Breathe Fire. They've got Soul Assumption. They've got uh, Disruptor with uh, um, Static Storm, etc. Doom, of course. But that's the problem, is they have to make sure that Siler is able to get up some items fairly quickly. I mean, he can go a farming build with the Helm of the Dominator and try to get up just some early damage that way. But when you compare it, as you said, to a Fnatic lineup that can deal with BKBs fairly well, and Gyrocopter being a fairly BKB-reliant hero, I, I feel like Fnatic still has a, a fairly a team that can not only be aggressive, but has every reason to want to be aggressive based on what Vici has drafted. Looking at Fnatic's lineup, they also don't have any natural BKB heroes, too. Yep. Uh, I mean, Kunkka's like okay with BKB. Elder Titan rarely gets one. Timbersaw sometimes gets one. Way after Bloodstone, Crystal Maiden, if you're farmed, you get one. And Death Prophet often goes for HP items and survivability. Instead, uh, not, not BKB, like Bloodstone, um, sometimes just mech, drums, that sort of uh, item. Shiva sometimes I've seen heart, but rarely do you see a BKB. So I'm curious as to how Fnatic is going to be able to deal with it, uh, deal with all this magic damage that you talked about on the side of VG. And the horn blows, game number three of our lower bracket finals. One of these teams goes home in third place, the other advances to the grand finals to meet LGD China. Let's see who's handling who, starting with Vici. Gonna have ROTK playing on the Doom. Super will be taking the Dragon Knight mid, no surprise there. Finrear back on the Visage. FY will be playing on the more surprising pick in the Disruptor. <laughs> and Gyrocopter gonna be farmed by Siler. On the other side of the, of the river, we've got Fly handling our Crystal Maiden. No Tail already with an invis. He's actually rotating the mid already and the Torrent off from Demon. No Tail on our Elder Titan and Kunkka handled by Demon as mentioned. Timbersaw will be played in the off lane by Trixie and Death Prophet gonna be farmed out of the safe lane by AUI. Yep, early CS advantage goes to Kunkka mid, 2-0. and zero. No creep score for um, Dragon Knight as of yet. We saw early rotation from the tail, but that was spotted, off, spotted out by an Observer Ward. ROTK coming under a little bit of harass. No tail trying to zone him out, but Elder Titan is not very good at the, accomplishing that. Trixie, in the meantime, getting zoned out by FY on bottom. Yep, down at bottom, Trixie's going to have a hard life. He's already soaked a little bit of experience, but... 
He is going to be taking a fair amount of damage anytime he dares show his face. He has to be very conscious of the kill potential this lane has with uh, Glimpse. You know, all of a sudden, Timber Chain isn't that reliable once one point goes into Glimpse. It's not just going to be your get-out-of-jail-free card. And he's going to have to play very, very careful and just try to soak experience like he is right now, hanging out in the shadow of these pool camps. Yep, we see Trixie taking a little bit of damage as he's trying to interfere with the creep pool. And... Yeah, another torrent comes out from Demon and misses, but he has his bot on the way, so he won't be lacking in the mana department anytime soon. Kunkka actually going for an early X build, so we'll see the 112 build most likely coming up. Yep. And very, very easy to start fighting in small skirmishes with a 112 build on Kunkka. And I like that based on what we see Vici doing. I mean, again, Gyrocopter, very BKB dependent, but. Um, Fnatic having the ability to deal with that, there's no reason in the world for them to not want to press the issue so long as they can find themselves on even footing in terms of farm and positioning. Down to bottom, looks like Vici though, ready to push tier one. He has illusion runes that can redirect the creep wave a little bit. Oh, Trixie. Trixie caught out and able to make it away, but not before taking a lot of damage and forcing a rotation from No Tail. And the Ancestral Spirit doing a little bit of damage. Disruptor has put a point into Glimpse, so very fortunate that no tail came down otherwise he very well might have ended up dead there you know it's very important for Fnatic to try and get levels up as soon as possible they need level six on timber they need level six on uh death profit before uh they can start fighting vici has a slightly better team fight comp uh at the moment and elder titan is one of their best anti push heroes uh aside from death profit and death profit needs her farm in the top lane fly looking to pressure rotk a little bit yep showing his face soaking some experience but will end up ducking back out we see No Tail's been very active, but Demon in mid. Yep, Demon heard the Dragon Tail go off, and Super lacking just five mana, give or take, for a Breathe Fire. Otherwise, he might have gotten the kill there. Demon though, able to bottle himself back up to safety, and the Torrent doesn't connect. So a lot of back and forth there, as we can see. Dragon Knight has taken a step ahead, 18 and four to Demon's 15 and three. Torrent is extremely hard to hit. <laughs> in mid, even against a melee hero who typically needs to come up for creeps. So, ooh, see ROTK, Fly, peeking him out. And Fnatic, uh -uh. not really doing all that great a job of zoning him out. He's level four and a half right now. Compare that to the two and a half of Fly and No Tail, who's sitting just now at level three, and AUI just now a fresh five. So all things considered, hey, this has not been a bad offlane performance out of ROTK at all. In fact, he's got some CS sitting right about in the middle of the pack, 10 and one for him, nine and one rather. FY checking a rune on bottom, but Trixie's already taking an invisibility rune. Nobody knows on the side of Vichy what it was. They didn't have a ward up at the time. And it looks like they're going to make another push at the tower. Siler going for the early phase, but he also Dyer's has his ring of Vesilius for extra tower pressure. But No Tail's already here for his actual spirit. And here comes the TPN trying to catch them out. And he can glimpse fly back if he wants to. He did not do so. No, he did. Did he get him? Yes, he did. Managing the glimpse and back. Oh. Barely misses. And Timber Chain Dyer's moving him on down the lane. The rest attack. of Vici still pursuing out Trixie. Glimpse on cooldown as he spent it previously, but Trixie will be able to make it back to safety. That was so close to a kill on Federer. That would have been a really big kill for Fnatic. It would have pretty much hindered their push and it would have given them a huge influx of gold. So just barely miss out on that demon with a full bottle mid. Looks like he's actually taking it up for a bracer instead of phase, which I rarely see. And super, now level six, beginning to put some pressure onto this tower down at bottom. You can see No Tail and Trixie still trying to hold the line, Siler. Playing quite far forward, just now completes his phase boots. He's almost level six, about level five and a half, give or take. AUI coming up on six as well, and I feel like that's really going to be the cornerstone of Fnatic and how they're going to end up in this match. They have to get some mileage out of AUI as soon as he hits six and as soon as he's able to start moving around. Yep, Demon looking for a kill attempt in the middle. He does have mana for all three of his spells in case he has some backup. A super at 800 HP and eight armor is not going to go down very easily. I think they need three heroes in total if they want to kill him. But super is not poking his head out. Instead, checking top rune for the six minute mark. And here comes Fly. Regen picked up by super. It will be bottled up. And Demon realizing he came up short. 
Arc boots done on ROTK. Oh, Very both teams looking for a gank on mid. There might be potentially seven people there. Trixie heads back. Yep, there's Demon and Dragon tilt out. No kinetic field out of FY. The rest are there from Fnatic, though, and Super may have overstepped himself. X marks the spot, going to bring it back. The boat's going to be off the mark, but doesn't matter as No Tail able to bang him down with one good right click. And Fenrir taking a lot of damage, flies there to add another kill to the tally. FY going to be pursued out and make it three. They end up dropping the Crystal Maiden in response, but a three to one exchange for Fnatic. What was a quiet early game blows wide open. Yeah, that was very nicely played by the support of Fnatic. And in that sort of situation, when it's a three on three, the person who initiates first is going to lose if you don't have um, vision. And they did not have vision up that hill. Uh, meanwhile, Fnatic has this word up the hill, so they were pretty much completely aware of that. And Demon managed to escape. And one underrated effect about the ghost ship is that rum. And he was able to survive throwing out that boat quite early on in the fight. He actually went for three X marks a spot uh, for the X boat combo. Demon and Fly looking to continue with the aggression. And Super moves up. Here we go. There's the X. Torrent is there, and it will connect. But Super with enough support. No, never mind. Frostbitten, and he's going to end up dead. Here comes the call down. Demon throws the boat, and he'll be able to survive because of it. Fly scampers away with just 30 HP. So even though they took a lot of damage in a bloody nose or two, they managed to bring down Super. It's so important that they keep Super down in this early game. Siler is also forced to rotate away from bottom. So initially what was a free farming situation for Vici is turning into, every, hey, everyone come mid because they're putting out so much pressure. So these supports on Fnatic are just doing an amazing job. Fly and No-Tail definitely carrying their weight in this early game. Gold graph, about 1,500 in favor of Fnatic. And Aoi has been uncontested in top lane. He has not yet used his uh, exorcism yet. The tower still at a very healthy 1245 HP and glyphs still up. But he's going to have that mech right now he has 900 gold as well as the headers and the um, and the buckler yeah I like I like this decision out of Fnatic now's the time though now that the mech is done they need to get something accomplished otherwise Vici's going to be able to reset themselves and look to regroup and rally if they can just continue with the momentum they've built so far they're going to have a chance to run away with this in the mid game down the bottom Siler continuing to farm up he's got only got 600 gold to go with his phase and his bassy coming to that fight there in mid accomplished nothing as they didn't get a single return kill and uh, Fnatic has got to feel very very good about the position they're in as we approach 10 minutes in yes yes they do and Captain Bamboo with the bottle moving kind of slow but will grab that mechanism gonna be a set of phase boots done on demon as well here comes Vici looking to make something happen in the dire side jungle a UI in a pretty precarious situation if he decides to double back doesn't look like he will yeah his game sense is pretty good they have his ever ward up here but there's been far too many heroes missing for far too long and Vici's kind of in that spot where they need to make something happen right now or they need to get a ton of farm up on Siler or both Siler farming okay. I mean, he's on top of the CS board, but he's not Dyer's running away with it or anything. 56 to the 55 of AUI, 38 and 36 for Demon and Super, respectively. So not like his uncontested farm has been completely and utterly um, a liability. They are going to go ahead and use Exorcism here in mid now. That's going to force the usage of the Glyph. Here comes Vici converging on mid to try and prevent this. Waiting on more creeps now. And the Glyph has worn off. AUI with just enough for another creep swarm. And actually will not use it. Gonna hang Dyer's on to it for the moment. He needs a mana for mech. And Black Cannon doing a decent job. There's X and the cooldown's gonna be there. There's the torrent and the boat. Siler gone. Earth Splitter connected as well. Here comes Trixie from the back. Super's in trouble. Fenrir's in trouble. They're pursuing him out. They managed to clean him up and now FY. Next on the list, that's another four for nil exchange. Buybacks there. We will see a return kill on Fly. Maybe, but maybe not. Hang on. Siler can't pursue him. That's off of a buyback. And he got very little accomplished. They did manage to kill off AUI at one point, but he's still making a run for it behind the fight. ROTK looking for Trixie. And Trixie looking for Siler. Let's see. Yep, he's just going to keep on running. 
Wow, they tried to focus on a Death Prophet before the Exorcism return, but they were focusing her down as the Speeders were returning to her, and that would just cost them to fight right there on the spot. And he just had so much heal from that as well as the mech. And that was just a very nice push coming out from Fnatic. They didn't actually manage to take down a T1 tower, but they still got a lot of damage done, killing uh, many important heroes from VG, killing Super yet again, and killing Settler almost two times. Taking a look at where we stand, 3-0 and o on Trixie, 3-0 and o on No-Tail as well, 2-1 and one for Fly, and more importantly, 0-3 oh on Super, and this is where you see Dragonite really stumble out of that mid position. We've seen Super even stumble out of that mid position on DK. You cannot get off to this low of a start in the first 10 to 15 minutes. It's so hard to recover. He's not particularly that great at flash farming his way back into relevancy after he's fallen behind. He can farm okay, but he's not going to be able to just uh, play a farm game at this point. And Demon, with no tail and flying, gonna clean up this tier one tower. And tower another win falling. going the way of Fnatic. Yep. Free tower, tower for them, and attack. now Siler is completely under farm. He had one of the most CS in the game with 62 CS, um, and now he just doesn't have anything. He's 0, 1, and 0. Phase boot up magic stick on your free farming gyrocopter, and compare that to Aoi, who has a mech to his name, and 800 gold, and is already pressuring this tower with his tranquil boots online. Oh, they find Fly. Or Fly, FY. caught out, and he will be cleaned up. Kinetic Field went down. Here comes the boat, and ROTK next on the list as well. Fnatic is flat out outmaneuvering VG right now. Every time they move as a team, they're finding the cracks in the armor and they are capitalizing on it. Make it two to 10 as yet another tower falls. That gold lead now up to 5,000. And do you believe in miracles, my friend? Fnatic on the verge and looking good to shock Radiance the world once again. Vici needs levels on their support so badly. If you look at CM, she's almost level 8. Elder Titan is level 8, and there's still no familiars up on Visage. There's still no Static Storm up on Disruptor. And without those, Disruptor's just not that good of a pick. I think he's good sometimes, but uh, Fnatic's not really overextending. Uh, and that's real, and they're not really making positional errors, which is where Glimpse comes in uh, supremely useful. And I think their idea was like, hey, we'll just like kind of roll them if they try to run away. We'll Glimpse back, force them to fight with a call down with a Doom, and we should win a fight from there. But they haven't been able to get into that situation at all, just because Fnatic's instantly uh, killing one or two with a Kunkka combo. And Demon, I think, has been playing very well on the Kunkka. He hasn't had any kills yet, but still involved in six of them thus oh, yeah. far. Well, the important thing is he's managed to hit his x torrent combinations and even hit a few x torrent boats as well, killing off Siler most notably in that uh, contest in mid over the Tier 1. But we want to talk about someone who's under farm. Take a look at Super right now. Poor guy sitting on treads, bottle, and bracer, and barely enough gold to rub together for a teleport scroll. And uh, AUI, on the other hand, mech bit booster to tank him up. Here comes the TPN. And Kinetic Field will be off the mark. Demon's there. And he's going to be four staffed ahead. There's X on to Siler. Can they time it out correctly? They can! Siler caught out again with the Earth Splitter to make sure the kill's secured. In the meantime, Trixie able to help track down another kill on the Disruptor. And this is beginning to feel a bit out of hand. Fnatic has absolutely found their rhythm, and Vici seems to be in utter disarray. No Tail has a four staff on the Elder Titan. He's like almost more farmed. He is more farmed than Gyrocopter right now. We see four of Fnatic's heroes Radiant on top of the uh, net worth chart right now, and Radiant's they need BKBs. With the, without BKBs on Vici, they can't stop the X Torrent combo, and they're going to immediately fight four on five. And. That was a nice attempt by the Glimpse, but it's too little too late from Vici. How are they going to get back in this game? They need to Ancient Stack for Asylum. They need to get his BKB online as soon as possible. That buyback was just extremely costly, and it's a lot of this, pretty much everything has to do with the early supports rotation from Fnatic. Without Fly and Notaire being there early to save Demon and kill Super, um, without that sort of pressure, then Siler would just keep free farming bottom. He'd have his BKB up by now, and Fnatic might have to be a little bit more careful in team fights, but Fnatic just just rolling them, just smashing them in the face with mass ultimates. Radiant I'll tell you who has been playing out of attack. his mind, especially given the way the game started. No tail on the Elder Titan, involved in 11 of Fnatic's 12 kills to this point, has been everywhere he's needed to be, and has just been on point with everything he's needed to do. Even his Earth Splitters have been extremely well-timed at Synergy with the X-Torn combo. 
And when the boat hits, certainly makes life a lot easier. But even if those boats were missing, his Earth Splitters would have been on the money. Vici knows this is going on. Oh, what a kinetic field static storm. Got three. They're all caught trying to make a run into the pit. Call down is there. Super's going to pursue them in. And this is a big turnaround. However, Fly on the high ground gets off the full channel. Earth Splitter helping to slow things down. They do manage to track down Demon. And AUI Fly now in some trouble. And there's the glimpse back as Fly will be cleaned up as well. Trixie has a homing missile on him, and he's going to go ahead and go after Super. Can he get him? He does. He's going to end up dead regardless, but that's a triple kill for Finn Rear. Four for one, the exchange. And that's the shot in the arm that Vici needed to try to get things back on track. Beautifully played out of FY's Disruptor, catching three with Static Storm and Kinetic Field. I think he caught four. It was it, that was just really well played by Disruptor right there, and they managed to get a duo on Death Prophet before she can pop the mech. I'm surprised that she didn't pop it a little bit earlier. Death Prophet actually going for the Atos, so mech and Atos in 16 minutes time. That is incredible farm on uh, Aoi. I think it, he might be better suited to get a Necro Book because it's better suited against Doom. Um, at, you just pop your mech uh, pretty early as soon as you take 250 damage or your team takes damage and you pop your necro book and you pop your ghost and then pretty much if you get doomed it's just like whatever I, I can still do it a ton of damage but with atos it's just like eh you can kind of survive it uh, you still get the strength from uh, the necro book as well which will help with uh, being able to survive doom or you could just get a pipe too and tank it up roshan still available and fanatic wants attack. to take it there is a ward across the river. They should have seen they this, and they certainly take go it. now. If they want to do it quickly. Exorcism's up right now. The rest of Vici converging on it now. They're going to sell out for this. Roshan down to about half health, but Vici. It's so difficult for Vici to fight into this, though. Yeah, they have. They, it's pretty much the same position as last time, but the ghosts are already up, and Roshan's at like 30% HP. They have to make a move Here now. Here we go. Another great kinetic field static storm. Trixie and Demon and Fly. That's going to be three down in the blink of an eye. Buybacks immediately out of Demon. And Trixie, AUI next on the list. He ends up dead. Demon back into the fight, but wanders into a lost battle as all he can do is rush away with no tail. And the homing missile is going to be on the way. So far, FY has been the absolute saving grace. Another huge Static Storm kinetic field, and this time they're going to get a Roshan out of it, though. Looks like they did manage to track down a kill on FY. Yeah, the, I mean, Fnatic just wanted that Roshan way too badly. They could have just taken it a little bit easy. Could have just been doing the same thing that they've been doing, especially taking out C1 on bottom. I think that should have been the first objective. ROTK, though, caught out. Very low health. Another nice X Torrent from Demon. And now Super in some trouble. Five seconds until X marks the spot is up. He should. Oh! No tail. Missing by just a whiff. Behind the fight, though, here's some whirling blades and the such. Yep, and it looks like, yeah, Siler actually lost his Aegis. Trixie was able to track him down in the jungle and able to do it again. So Fnatic able to get some immediate payback as they track down Siler. There's a glimpse back onto Trixie, but able to get away with some help from his friends. But immediate payback, they get the Aegis, and they manage to kill him off twice. So Siler continues to struggle a bit. Yeah, Siler still needs his BKB. 2,000 gold. He needs another 1,000 order to finish it. But he's just not finding any time to farm. Radiant's Fnatic just keeps fighting with their attack. very low cooldown ultimates. Exorcism, not that long of a cooldown considering how powerful the ultimate is. Only 100 seconds on that. Kunkka, 50 seconds on his. Timbersaw, 8 seconds. And Elder Titan, it's... Um, El Split Radiant's Earth is like, eh, whatever. Earth Splitter, rather. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they just being bringing the fight fast and furious to Vichy all game long. Siler can't find any room to breathe. And No Tail, again, has been such a huge part of this, though it's now Trixie who's beginning to shine on this Timbersaw. He's got a 1,000 gold to go with his arc up. Hang on, fly. Glimpse back, caught in the kinetic field, but the immediate reaction out of Fnatic will prevent any deaths. They might get some free birds, even Super is going to be caught with the Atos and now with the Chakram. Timber Chain off the mark, and they're unable to pursue because of it. However, they do manage to track down FY to the north of the river. And Fnatic now back on the warpath. And bottom, though, Siler split pushing as best he can. We'll see if they want to account for that or just flat out try to trade a tier two for a tier one. Looks like it'll be the latter. 
Yep, if Siler guesses though, he'll have his BKB, which is so important for Vici right now. I think that Vici is going to be okay to defend this because they had to expend exorcism and they won't be able to get anything else after it. Uh, Fnatic needs to sweep bottom lane though. They need to be able to get that tower so they can stop uh, Vici from farming their own jungle. And they won't actually lose a tower. Yep, they'll be able to deny it. And we'll see if that's what they're going to do. And yep, going to go ahead and bring it down by their own hand. Slain Dyer's with honor. Bottom tower Slain by their own hand. Denied. Shadow Blade out on Demon. So Demon slowly continuing to put together his items. We can see Gold Graph, or the net worth, I should say. Three of the top four all belong to Fnatic right now. Top two being AUI and Trixie. Or No Tail, rather. Fenrir standing right on top of the room where Fnatic knows exactly what's going on here. Vici, they need the tower gold. They need uh, the T1 tower gold in middle. Just check Siler's inventory. He needs 50 gold until his BKB. He's trying to get this one creep wave, and yep, he should be able to get it right after that. Uh, Fnatic has some very good war setup, though. One right here and one in mid. So um, they can farm the ancient stack if they want to. No-Tail has stacked it. Uh, three times, it looks like. And Kuka has finished the Shadow Blade too. So a lot of things going well for Fnatic now. Curious to see what Death Prophet is going to go for next. I think he should make a pipe. Uh, would probably be the best item for them right now. Demon going head hunting, looking for a target. And we'll have his smoke popped. They're hiding out around back of the trees. Demon runs to the high ground, expecting them to be there. And no vision of the low ground, unable to catch them with a X torrent. And Siler moving back out to farm. He's a little overextended here. I'm shocked. He went this far out. He has BKB, though. And here we go. Exorcism is popped. And they managed to bring one back. That's going to be Trixie. Brought back with Glimpse. And they will be able to clean him up. Silent with the BKB up. Able to take through this damage. Call down, caught a couple. Demon, oh, nicer splitter. Disjoints everything as it slows them down and buys time for Fnatic to retreat. Catching Trixie with the glimpse a huge huge coup for them as they managed to keep Siler alive and keep their tower together not the biggest loss for Fnatic um, he's still actually very close to his uh, to his blood zone. He's, he's about another 800 gold but Demon managed to survive as did Aoi and with that the ghost there's no reason that they should fight now Vici uh, their BKB is still on cooldown for another 45 seconds so they can't really fight either Demon looking to go on mid he does not have boat up for another 10 seconds moving up with no tail and fly in tow Unable to find a target, though. So we're at 23 minutes now. Taking a look at the gold graph, we can see Fnatic still maintains their lead. Has been chopped into a bit, but generally in the vicinity of where it is has been at its highest point. The experience becoming a little bit closer, but moving ahead into the mid game. Tell me, Ben, who do you think it really has the advantage and what is going to be key as we look uh, into the meaty parts of this mid game for both teams? I think Fnatic has just so much damage coming out, uh, and Dragon Knight still doesn't have any BKB. They have so many different sources, um, and a lot of it goes to BKB, so the BKB is not even that relevant. They have the natural order to augment Kunkas, Tidebringer AoE, the Torrent, Ghost Ship combo, um, the Timber Saw Burst 2, as Radiant's well as the Exorcism uh, Ghost from Death Prophet. On Vichy, they have Doom, which is like nice and all, Radiant's but um, and they have uh, Siler on Jarakata, but he doesn't have any damage yet. All he has is a BKB, so I'd have to favor Fnatic going in here, and I think if they can secure like the next three to four minutes and maybe just take one fight off of Vichy, they can get the next Aegis and keep pressuring Vichy all game and starve them out so that Siler is irrelevant in the late game. Checking uh, the Roche pick quite early and uh, wonder if they didn't take down the time because it's still two minutes before we even know what the extra time will be on his region. Looks like Demon will be wanting to get a BKB out. I like that choice a lot against uh, against this Dyer's lineup from Vici. Chirocopter as attack. of yet has, has yet to build any real damage. I mean he's hitting okay-ish right around 150, 140 in that general range. But so much of what Vici does is predicated on magic damage, and in particular, burst magic damage. And if they can take that away, give him a little bit more survivability, they're going to have a great chance to just continue to steamroll over these Tier 2 towers. Speaking of, bottom Tier 2 going to be the next target, and Vici is moving into position. And they manage to catch Tyler. Earth Splitter is there. Oh, missed him just barely, nonetheless. They force his BKB, though. That's yep. pretty big. And up atop, Demon, like in the chase down ROTK. Both of them are hustling. He has no support, though. He can't solo kill him, so I don't really know why he's still chasing. He's Dyer's gonna give it a hell of a shot. Is under attack. Can he get in range? Up, oh, got him. And there's the torrent, but just gonna leave it at that. Chasing him pretty much out of principle. Dyer's top yep, there's a smoke from uh, 
a super FY and Fenrir, though. They might catch Demon. He needs to kill this creep way fast and back off, or else he's going to get glimpsed back. And that's exactly what he'll do. They're going to make a run at this tower. Fnatic already moving back into their own jungle, maybe anticipating a move like this. And Demon up could be in trouble. He's going to be clearing out this creep wave. Nope, they're not going to go that way. Instead, cutting around near the side shop. Flies in the vicinity, and they're all going to rejoin in their own jungles. So Demon able to dodge a bullet there. Trixie's so close to his blood zone, he wants to farm it before this next fight. Uh, just 25 gold away. He could just sit at the shop if he wants to. Vici not feeling that gank, though. And so far, Fnatic able to stabilize. We'll find out. No Tail's going to have a Lincoln soon, by the way. Yeah, No Tail's been playing out of his mind. And it's been such a huge part of Fnatic's success so far. I mean, we can see he's sitting at 4 0 and 12, involved in 16 of Fnatic's 17 kills. Whoa, super short Roshan timer. Going to be back up in 10 seconds now. Yeah, that, uh, that is ridiculously low. And looks like Fnatic's going to take down this tower. Can Vici defend this? Maybe if they get a nice static storm from Disruptor, but it's still going to be extremely difficult. Bloodstone up on Timbersaw just in time. And just, uh, there's a Chakra Man, the Earth. Splitter caught our OTK. Down he goes. Behind the fight. <laughs> they all withdraw and regroup. And here we go, Demon. Forced out to safety, and they will retreat off of that buyback forced out of Doom. I'm no glimpse either. This is disastrous for Vici. Vici, unable to do much. They spent their glimpse early. Yeah, they still have the BKB on Siler, so Fnatic should not fight right now. They don't have exorcism. So they forced a, they got a kill, they forced a buyback, they got some damage on a T2. That's good enough to call it a day. Vici looking for blood, though. They have smoked up. They are looking for anyone that has stuck around, but Fnatic has a smoke, too. Oh, double smoke right into each other. Nice style. Oh, another beautiful static storm kinetic field. Locking down three. There's that magic burst. Deny. Timbersaw committing. Suicide Demon's the one that's doomed. He will be glimpsed back and cleaned up because of it. So a nice victory there for Vici. The fake back from Fnatic blowing up in their face. AUI. That was just not, not a smart fake back, though. Yeah. They, they didn't have the cooldowns to uh, accommodate for that. Dying With Exorcism, they can fight. Without it, they fallen. can't. And uh, maybe if Settlers BKB uh, were down, they could do it. Or maybe if they stopped clumping up for the Static Storm, yeah. uh, they could. But, I mean, FY has just been spot on with those. And that's what happens when you have uh, those three melee heroes that need to be up close and personal. Start calling FY the Jailer, because that's all it, the, the Warden. That's what he's done all game long, is lock these heroes together and make them suffer. And pretty much every fight v Vici has won has been because of yeah, FY's play. Really, it really has been. So right now, the Disruptor pick paying off quite a bit. 8,000 gold, up to, was up to 10,000 for Fnatic, but Eesh. dipped into a little bit there. And FY, Super, Siler, all continuing to hang around mid for the moment. No Tail using his Ancestral Spirit to check things out but for the most part everyone's stabilizing right now so we're coming up on 30 minutes into this game flies actually picked up an ogre club so he's looking for some magic community that lincoln's as you mentioned for no tail should be out sometime in the near future bkb should be done on demon in about a thousand gold give or take bloodstone now with just six charges since Strixie committed suicide but uh we'll see where he wants to go from here perhaps boots to travel the next logical choice and aui just going with an AUI-esque build, getting the Yules to go with his mech and his uh, rod of AM Atos. Yeah, and I don't think the extra move speed is that imperative for him, uh, for the Yule Scepter. And, like, the Cyclone, I, I guess the Cyclone is pretty useful if he doesn't get doomed, though. That's the main thing. If he gets doomed in the fight, he's going to be useless, which I, why I think, uh, oh, Trixie gets caught out, but just TP's away, actually. Vici unable to capitalize on an opportunity there. Roshan spotted by the familiar, and this is going to mean no tail's going to spot it. Yes, it will AUI. They cannot clump up for another FY Static Storm or Connect Field, or they're going to lose the fight. They still have no BKBs, and I don't think any of them are going to build them anytime soon. Or oh, actually, Kunkka's going for a BKB, but uh, does he actually have it on the chicken right now? Uh, yes, he does. Vici knows this is going on. They just don't feel like they can challenge it. This is a given away for free. So yeah. Kunkka. Nice, the nice space created by Trixie there. Uh, he was on the left side. He's like threatening the T2, so they have to be over there, but that's just the green light for Fnatic to go. And Kunkka picks up his BKB. First one out. And a lot of them on the way. That, yeah, check that. DK hat is. But uh, still sitting at a 10 second duration. Looks like we're going to have a quick pause. We're right at the 30 minute mark here in game three of our lower bracket final LGD China. 
awaits the winner of this game. And the loser, of course, will finish in third place here at the HyperX D2L. So uh, 30 minutes in, I mean, obviously the metrics tell us Fanatics in the lead, and I don't think there's any arguing that from any practical point of view. What's Vici got to do to get things back on track, and what is their number one priority over the next 10 minutes? Well, now that they finally have BKBs up on Super and a Settler, they can take a decent fight. They need to burst down an important hero very fast. Uh, either Death, Pro uh, Death Prophet uh, right now is the best target for them just because Kuka has an Aegis of the Immortal as well as BKB. So I think they just need to eliminate Death Prophet from the fight like very, very early on so the Exorcism can't do that sort of work. Um, also, they need to catch the non-PKB heroes in a nice static storm into a call down plus flat cannon combo to um, secure some kills. So uh, they have to capitalize on Fnatic's uh, poor positioning or force them into poor positioning to win these fights. They can't really gank. I mean, they can, I guess, with Clint, but Fnatic hasn't really been uh, allowing opportunities for that. If you look at their position right now, they're all like very close together. So if someone gets Clint's back, they can always fight. So uh, Fnatic just needs to keep that up. They need to be... Uh, not vulnerable to glimpse ganks. They also need to not clump up for static storm kinetic field, and uh, they just need to try and bait out BKBs very early or, early, or just get a clean initiate on somebody. Doom has still has no BKB, so he's their prime target for an X horn initiate. The lack of sustained physical damage on the side of VG is potentially going to come to an end very soon. We see Siler. His helmet of the Dominator. He's got 3,000 gold in his inventory. This is really when Fnatic wants to get the job done before he's able to use flat cannon to melt them down and speaking of melting down this tier two top will be glyph we'll see if it's going to be contested chakra being used to help zone things out demon face checking behind and they'll take it for free so bg just gives it away Yep, they can get some damage on the T3 while Exorcism is still up. It still has maybe like 10 seconds left, so they have to be just in and out. And they also have to watch for the Glimpse too, so FY standing in the far back. They also have Reserve Ward over here, so if someone overextends, they can potentially Glimpse, but FY, he's moving up there. They see no tail, but he four staffs away. And do they smoke? Nope, FY still looking for someone to Glimpse though. Lincoln's on the way for no tail. And... It is, it is so rare that you find a Lincoln and a Force Staff on a support Elder Titan who has not even died yet a single time this game. Yep, 4 0 and 13. 17 of Fnatic's 18 kills have involved No Tail in some way. And um, based on his play on IO throughout uh, tonight as well, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt. If Fnatic goes on to win this series, the MVP of this series will be No Tail. There's yeah, his, just no doubt. The support play is just incredible from Fnatic. And yeah, standards are nice, but if. The, the two supports have just done so much work, freeing up space for Aoi, securing Demon's farm and levels in mid, uh, too. Aegis reclaimed in three minutes. Roshan obviously coming back up in the next five or so. Um, and, I mean, at this point, we see Super looking for his Assault Cure ass. They really, really have to start getting more damage out of Siler. Siler did pick up an Eagle Song, so he will be going with the Butterfly. This is going to help him in that regard. But what is this? An Eye of Scotty picked up on AUI. Oh, boy. That is super scary, too. Now, if he gets doomed, he has 2,300 HP, and he can still right-click people and slow them down. So that's pretty good versus the 3 BKB from Vichy, too. And Io Scotty, typically seen as a very poor choice on an item, but I think the island's highly underrated. It has a very poor buildup, um, but it works great versus BKB. One thing I love about it is how it's going to work in terms of late game and Vichy. You know, Dragon Knight, even though he is semi-ranged whenever he has uh, Elder Dragon for him, Gyrocopter the same. They're not exactly super long range. And just being able to have something, as you mentioned, that goes through BKB that allows the rest of Fnatic to rush those two heroes down instead of allowing them to kite, very important. And as you mentioned, just tanking him up and making him a much more difficult hero to deal with overall. And here we go. Exorcism pop. They're going to make a run at the Tier 3 bottom. Yep, Demon has a DD and an Aegis for two minutes. Up, there's a Dragon Tail on the AUI. Demon pops his BKB. Super, hitting a bit of damage. Homing Missile is there. Here comes the boat. Earth Splitter off the mark. BKB's up on both sides. There's a Kinetic Field and a Static Storm. It caught no one. Whiffed on all of it. And there's a Glimpse back, but Trixie will be cleaned up after being doomed. However, they managed to bring one down. And ROTK could be next on the list, using his mech to try and survive through. No Tails right on his tail. And said, oh, one last big switch. Swing of the hammer. Demon has his Aegis pop, but he'll be okay with that. Down goes Finn Rear, and now the buybacks come into play. 
Siler has no BKB. If he comes up, he gets X-Torrented and he dies. Or he just gets Atos and dies too. So Aoi, I mean, he was left to uncheck that fight. And you you can't just leave a Death Prophet alone. He'll just wreck your towers and wreck your face with this many items. He is so stacked right now. A full 3,500 gold ahead of Siler on the Gyrocopter. And they can't fight. Nope. Doom has no buyback. Visage has no buyback. The Disruptor has no Radiant's buyback. So the three heroes down are the three that cannot buy back into this Radiant's fight. And that's going to be a free set of racks. And there is a palpable sense in the air. Of oh, what? someone gets glimpsed. Oh, coming back. Nope, they actually used it on AUI who had the Lincolns on it. Demon just Shadow Blades away, and now they have 30 seconds left on most of their cooldowns. Actually, 10 seconds left on Death Prophet Ultimate, 20 seconds left on Earth Splitter, 50 seconds left on Crystal Maiden Ultimate, but that is the least important of the three. Exorcism up right now, and AUI wastes no time on it. This could decide this match. Vici, potentially the next major upset victim of Fnatic, has to try and find a way to hold the line. There's a stomp that actually caught Siler. The tier three just melting down bit by bit. Demon way up front. Lincoln's popped again. Down goes the tier three. Took it for free. Now the BKBs come out. There's kinetic field static storm. Caught no one. ROTK and Super trying to lead the way, but Fnatic kiting them out. ROTK's in trouble. And we're going to see the call down go off, but the damage minimal at best. Super next on the list, and this could be it. Kunkka picks up some boots of travel. We see Trixie caught inside that time. And the Yule Scepter taking AUI off the map. Buyback on Demon as he rejoins the fight. Super now in trouble, and the BKB off of Demon allows him to clean him up. Siler next on the list, and the stomp from No-Tail helps secure the kill. That's a triple kill for AUI, and Super cannot flee. The effect from Scotty makes it tough for him to try to run away. Buybacks come out on every available hero, but the damage is already done, Fnatic. Unable to bring down another set of racks, but forcing that many buybacks, bringing down the racks at bottom, taking down the tier three, it is now all in time for Vici. Yep, Fnatic just needs to secure the Aegis one more time uh, and put it on Kunkka, and it it's, should be a good game from there. Uh, Aoi has 5,000 gold, too, after purchasing, purchasing the Aya Scotty. Uh, looks like he bought, he, he bought a plate mail, so he's going to have Shiva's guard, too. So, like, how do you stop the death problem? He can just run right in the middle with Exorcism. If you do him, his Exorcism's already down, and you can't kill him. He has 34 armor, too. Like, it, it's insane how farmed Aoi is. Yep, AUI. Sitting atop the net worth by quite a margin. Just about 7,000 gold. Oh, they're not even going to wait for the Aegis. Roche is going to be back up sometime very soon. Looks like they just want to keep Vici contained in the meantime. But Fnatic on the verge. They smell the blood. They oh. taste the victory. Here it goes. Oh, yep, there's the Ato shoes. Kinetic Field will disjoin if they manage to catch AUI, but no initiation off of it. And that might have saved... Super a little bit at the very least. Roshan back up immediately. So Roche is available. No way to check unless they use a courier. Here we go. Just going to go for broke. And here comes the BKB out of ROTK. There's going to be a glimpse onto Aoi. He will be caught in the kinetic field. But using the Shivas, there's a static storm. AUI tanking through all of this damage. There's the boat. Boat will connect as well. No tail, though, being melted down. He needs to stay alive. Four staff going to get AUI back to safety. Lincoln's is active as well. Trixie has been doomed. Can't contribute a lot. Kinetic field back out. Can they sustain? AUI trying to track him down, down goes Siler, FY, next on the list. And now Super being pursued, Demon with 1x, GG! Can you believe it? Fnatic, in a city known for its odds makers, defies all the odds, all the predictions and punches their ticket to our grand finals, defeating Vici Gaming two to one. They played amazingly well this game, and they also drafted pretty well too. I'm uh, so surprised that they pulled off the early roaming support with Crystal Maiden and Elder Titan, a traditional, un, an untraditional duo, and very, very well played by No-Tail, MVP as a series. Oh, no doubt, absolutely no doubt. No-Tail's play throughout the entire series utterly and completely off the charts. He finishes up this game alone, 5-0 and 21.
five, zero, and 21 after roaming the map corner to corner for the first 10 minutes. Involved in 26 of Fnatic's overall 29 kills. Outstanding performance from the stand-in, AUI as well. He finishes nine, three, and six on Death Prophet. One of the most farmed Death Prophets I believe I've ever seen. He finishes with 567 overall GPM. I have Scotty and Atos. A hey, Yule Scepter. Winning Scepter's. in style. Yep, no doubt about it. Walking out with all the bling. Walking out with every bit of bling. So, once again, can you believe it? Fnatic manages to defy all the odds, defy all the predictions. Coming in, two men down, AUI and Demon standing in, and they managed to get past Vici after knocking Alliance out yesterday. Looking ahead to the grand finals before us, Ben, give me the scouting report. I mean, <laughs> Fnatic, it's difficult to tell what we can expect from them. Yeah, sometimes they have the Shadow Fiend pick, but sometimes they just go with a very unusual draft like this, and they just make it made it work like so darn well, too. Um, just to, I think, fly and no-tail, though, just those two supports, you have to keep an eye out on them. If you can stop them from having that sort of impact, either zoning out or from the support zoning out or ganking mid, then... Yeah, maybe you can win the game from there, but uh, they pretty much just win two out of three lanes almost always because of the support rotation. So LGD China, if I'm them right now, I'm thinking we need to stop them too from getting the heroes that they want, and we also need to stop them from just wrecking our early game. Absolutely. I mean, it's Fnatic has just shown you curveballs can often uh, often create a swing and a miss, and we saw Alliance swing and miss, and now Vici. And, uh, you know, looking ahead to the Grand Finals, absolutely cannot wait. That'll be coming up next. But before that, Anna on stage with our winners. Take it away. All right, guys, I'm here with Fly, the captain of Fnatic. How amazing was that last match? <laughs> Fly, WTF, man. I mean, yeah. Ace is calling this the, the Cinderella story. You came here with two stand-ins, and you're telling me anything could happen. What did happen? Uh, I have no idea. Like, we were, yesterday we were thinking like, okay, third place is good. Okay, we're happy we already won something. And then now we came here today, we're like, okay, we can actually do this. And then, like, after second game, we were all super pumped up. We felt like we can take them out easily. And that's what we did, so. I guess so. What was the, the determining factor in this series, you think? What was, it, what was it that made you able to come out on top? Uh, I think we just learned. The more we played against, especially the Asian teams, we start to understand more how they play. And the more we play together, we understand what heroes work for us because it's completely different than what we usually play with our normal team. Like, I would never think of picking Dev Prophet. It wasn't for Aoi suggesting it, saying he, he works with it, so. Yeah, we've been noticing your, your kind of MO is to lose the first map, kind of get an idea, lull them into complacency, and then wins the next two. Is that, is that part of your strategy? Yeah, it's a good strategy, I think. Lose first, you know, pretty yeah. good. Definitely. Well, you know, we talked at the beginning of this tournament about how you're kind of on a second place streak. You've clinched your second place now. I mean, obviously, that's a, that's a good thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, do you want to stick with second place or do you think you have a really good chance at the first? We're going to get first this time. What is it going to take when you're playing against LGD in the finals? Um, <laughs> yes, Meepo. Me Meepo? Meepo. All right, the people want Meepo. All right, well, it's going to be a best of five for the $25,000 grand prize. Is that going to mean a lot to you and your team? It's actually interesting because your, your whole team isn't here. So it's like Fnatic and friends winning the yeah. tournament, if it, if it did. So how does that feel? Oh, it feels good. We're going to make the team jealous when we get back, saying, look at all this money you lost. <laughs> so it's going to be pretty good. All right, sounds good. We can't wait to see it. Thanks so much, Fly. Let's hear it again for Fnatic. <laughs> And we'll be right back after the break with the grand finals.